Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everyone. Lance Skurve here. Just wanted to say that, you know, with age, there should be a little more wisdom. But I'll tell you this much. There are so many of us out here who have gotten to a certain chronological age, and we haven't learned much proportionally to others. You see... When I was younger and I saw a gray hair on someone, I thought to myself that they were really saturated with wisdom. But as I get older, not necessarily so. I mean, I look at ages like the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, woo! I'm 61, it's like, whoa. There might be more pretty much behind me than there is ahead of me. But as I get to this particular point, I can see, and I'm not saying this in a condescending way, but I can see how many fools we have who have the chronological numbers behind them. And when I was a teenager, and I would see someone who was 60 years old, or 50 years old, 70 years old, I'd say to myself, wow. Because they would have no reason to open up and show their true sides to a teenager. But I would catch glimpses of their immaturity lots of times because I was a sharp kid. And I understood, but it was quite shocking and hard to digest. So I understand there's a lot of deception out here. People choose to show what they want to show of themselves according to the scenario, according to the people who are around them. It's like playing a game of cards. You don't put your hand down on the table. You keep it covered. So this is how people in their secret societies, and I don't mean just sororities and fraternities and Masonic groups, but on a spiritual level, so many people are in their own secret society and they can pick up the vibe of the next person. Even just through mere eye contact. You could be standing next to them. They can be in a crowd of people. But when they see the next person who is a kindred spirit, which kindred spirit doesn't always mean something bad. But when they find out that they're like-minded just from a visual download. Let me tell you something. Don't you know, and can I scientifically prove this? No. I'm not a scientist, I'm not doing any research, but those who have enough wisdom and experience in life, they know this to be true. They say the eyes are the windows or mirrors to the soul. That's true. Because when you look at someone directly, you download something of them if you stay long enough. And it could be a quick glance. You download something and you share something of your essence with them just from eyesight. Have you ever run across an animal that may have been cornered? Usually they would run away from you. But you didn't try to corner them, but you happened to walk down an alley next to a dumpster and there it is. A small animal. Depending on where you live, because out in the country you could run into a whole lot of things. But, but something cornered. And it sits there watching you. And then when you lock eyes with it, that animal is transfixed. It's frozen like a deer on the highway road in the headlights, frozen. And at that particular time, it's reading you. It's trying to figure you out. And when you finally lock eyes with that animal, nine times out of ten, it can pick up if you have the intention on harming it, as long as you don't come closer, because eyesight's not going to, uh, you know, the eye contact's not going to save you then, because they're going to feel endangered. But it knows. And you keep stepping, it won't do anything. But if it locks eyes with you, and it can see that you have murderous intent on its being, guess what? It goes into a whole different state of mind. It is ready to attack. It was minding his business. 
So when you have that gift of discernment and ability to download the essence of others, and it's a real deep thing, it's a little different than the kindred spirit thing because the kindred spirit thing, say for example, let's pick something very popular these days. Lust, L-U-S-T. Not just the lust for wealth or the lust for power or status. We're talking about lust of the flesh. For whatever it is that you're into. And you're moving about in the crowd. And you have this lust in your heart. I'll keep it decent. And you see someone who you feel is extremely attractive. Even if they're not attractive, lust will bring people together who have these deep carnal thoughts and they may not even be attractive, but they know they will do to each other what they want to do. There's that connection there, but that's on that level. The person who is hateful and venomous will look to see and find victims for their venom, for their anger that that innocent potential victim had nothing to do with. But when you have that gift of discernment on a, on, a, on a deeper level, you don't have to be into what these other people are into, whether it's anger or lust or gossip or, or being resentful of people who have worked hard to attain what they've attained to be successful on their level. You can see it all. You can see all of it. All it takes is just one look. Now, I can tell when a person has a really deep sense of discernment, you know how? When they avoid contact with people in general. I can tell those people who are gullible and their eyes are open and they're just soaking in everything around them. That's a dangerous place to be. Because eye contact is the first connection with a person and their essence. It's almost like eating a whole watermelon. Now, most people can't unless it's a small one, but I like watermelons. I don't care about the stereotype. I love watermelons. And I will get a huge watermelon and try to eat the whole thing or eat half and then go eat the other half immediately. I don't care about the other meals that I'm going to eat. That watermelon is there. That's all I see. Don't, don't give me dinner. Don't give me lunch. Don't give me breakfast. Let me kill that watermelon. Right? So it's almost like when your eyes are wide open. We're not just talking about the physical eye. We're talking about the third eye. We're talking about the gift. Of, no, not the gift of discernment. But the third eye and that portal. That's open that we don't guard to keep closed. It's just like eating a watermelon in this hot summertime, pulling open the windows and pulling back the screens and then going to sleep. That's a dumb thing to do. Why would you want to pull back the screens and let all the mosquitoes come in and they're going to find themselves chewing you up? You laying there in your bed or the couch or the chair, wherever you doze off, is the equivalent of an all-you-can-eat buffet. And they're going to chew you up. So you have to guard your eyesight. You have to guard the eyes. The physical eyes, which are connected to that spiritual eye, if you have that ability in depth. If you're not caught up in the lust and the venom and the anger and the snuffle around, you know, pushing your nose down like a pig in the gossip. If you're free from those things, you want to avoid the eye contact. Only you peek when you can to see what's coming. And that's how I can tell a person who's got that deep connection. You have some people out here, they have to push their face up in everything. You go out in your yard, here they go peeking out the window, staring at you. You go out in your front, they come out in their front, and they're staring at you. No, you're a pig. You're down for anything. You, you want to absorb it all. And it's not just being aware, because you can trust your spiritual intuition and instincts to be aware, even without staring something down. That tells me that that kind of person is a pig. 
Those kind of people are pigs and they run with gossip. They run with news because they're always looking for something to talk about. They're always looking for, to be up in somebody's business. They will even take on the characteristics of a fat pig. Their spirit will feel pig-like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to tell it. You ever give somebody a number? You just met them. You thought they would be interesting. This is not a dating thing. Just to, you know, hey, we got the same hobby. Oh, we're working on our houses together. You're working on your house. I'm doing mine. Hey, let's exchange some information. You meet them at a social gathering or a mutual friend's house, and they're into the same professional career. Say, hey, you know, let's keep up. And you talk to them two or three times, but then the whole facade begins to drop. They might be good at what they do. They might have that common denominator with you of that particular activity, but you realize there's other sides of them that you don't particularly dig. What are you going to do? You see that they're very toxic. You see that they're very negative. You see that they have nothing on their mind. And that career or that thing that they did was a shield and a cover for who they really are. You see what I mean? I mean, you can have a good relationship with your doctor and go to your doctor. Oh, the doctor's a good person. He treats me nice. But he might be beating his wife at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might have a personal trainer who's excellent with what they do, but secretly, even though they eat good, clean food, know how to teach you about this stuff, they might be an undercover heroin addict. You never know. There's so many people out here who, who do things that are totally opposite to the imagery that they put up in the world. I knew a drug counselor, a drug counselor, who was well decorated and well respected in their particular area because it was a little more uh, a little more zeroed in than that you know what they did exactly but the overall title was that they're a drug counselor very good one at that but at night they'd fiend for weed they would drive around at night looking for the weed guy if they couldn't find him they didn't know what to do some nights they would sit up, I'm feeding for weed. And then eventually, and I'm not saying everybody who smokes weed does this, but they got caught up in crack. So here we have a drug counselor going to a facility, helping people get off of drugs, counseling them, but they're smoking crack. What kind of mess is that? Come on now. You know how it is. You hear about these Catholic priests. Well, don't just call out the Catholic priest. It's every well, yeah, we know that, but they shouldn't be doing the stuff that they do. And when they get caught, it is news. They try to keep it hush hush. Catholic priests molesting little boys, nuns messing around with young girls and messing around with each other. I heard. And this is a fact, but I cannot bring it up because, listen, I've been doing these shows for a very long time. And there's a lot of information, not only that has passed through my head and through my lips, but things that are shared with me. And I want to say this as a side note. Don't get angry with me when you send me something. Right. And I don't respond right away because if a story comes out or something comes out that's noteworthy to talk about or you ask me your opinion and I'll do it eventually understand there might be 500 other people who send me the same video or article that if I was to sit there and respond to everyone it would be sun up and look around and be sundown and I wouldn't have done anything so I have to budget my energy but I do appreciate you sending it to me and if it's something that I can do within the time frame of a day as opposed to the other things that I do I will do it but understand that because I have people who send me like two and three hundred things a day. So imagine you have hmm, 60, 70 people sending you that amount of stuff. Right? And they get mad. Oh, I've been sending you stuff. You don't watch it? I'm a content creator. I consume certain things, but I wake up with things in my mind to talk about. And if it's good enough in my mind, I'm going to do it. 
end of conversation. <laughs> but you just never know who you're dealing with out here. And I just also want to say on top of that, because you don't know who you're dealing with, and this is not to try to sound paranoid or whatever, because I've been accused of being paranoid, right? But my paranoia has kept me from taking certain jabs. I have been accused of being paranoid by people who should have been a little more paranoid to not take the jab, <laughs> who put out an imagery of what their life is like, but there's a lot to be improved as it is with all of us. I need to improve things. They have the term, you know, we got to deal with our demons. I don't want to really say I have demons now. That's kind of harsh, but we all have ways and roads we need to travel down to improve ourselves. And we should seek to improve ourselves. We should seek to look forward to the future. We should, we should use the past as a, as a learning tool. And we reminisce, we laugh at different things. But what are you doing in the present to make for a better future? But here's, before I wrap this down, because this is not going to be a long one. The thing is, Stop trying to convince people to who you really are. You know, people will gossip. People will talk. People will say things. People will run with things. These are the pigs in your midst. They will always be pigs. They will never seek to improve themselves. They will work hard to try to look like the real thing, but they're not. They're comfortable where they are in life and they just want to use other people's business and lives to talk about like a sport. That's why they're not getting anywhere. That's why they're not making progress. That's why they watch you and they get more and more frustrated because they're not doing anything to improve themselves. Find something that you can do a little bit every day to improve yourself. An activity, self-reflection, meditation, learning something. And fruit, the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. These types of people came from people who were just like them. Their children are going to be idiots just like them because they're not feeding into them. They have nothing to feed into them with. Stupid parent, stupid child. Let's just call it for what it is. I am not ever trying to be politically correct anymore. You can see the, the inheritance of stupidity in certain family bloodlines until one of the components, the, the family members, choose to be different and they'll be ostracized for doing so because the stupidity can oftentimes be a family tradition and legacy. Oh, I like that one. I'm going to make a t-shirt out of that. <laughs> but that's the thing. So with these kind of people, they're always putting themselves, after pushing their nose up in your business, putting themselves on, on the throne of being a judge or you have to prove to them, oh, I heard this about you. And so listen, whatever you heard is true. We have to get away from trying to prove to people who we are, and who we're not. Because no matter what, they're not going to believe you. They're going to want to believe the worst of you. And you'll end up spending your life trying to prove to them. This can be family members. This can be friends. This can be neighbors. You, you, you keep your eyes to yourself. You walk the straight and narrow. You seek to improve who you are. To be a degree today better than what you were yesterday. And don't worry about trying to prove something to somebody. If I have a hole in my shoe and no car, I'm not trying to prove to you that I got a little money in the bank. Right? If I know that my intention is to get in shape and lose weight, you can make fun of me all you want if I look fat right now. Right? Right? I know where I'm going. Because see, once you make up your mind to do something, you're already there. It's just a matter of going through the process of getting there. I'm going to say it this way, and it's no disrespect 
to women that they, they'll call fat or men they'll call fat. But fat folks, once they make up their mind, I'm going to stick on this plan. I'm going to end up losing 50 pounds a year. I'm 150 pounds overweight of fat. I'm going to do this for three years. So guess what? Into the second month, it doesn't look like there's much change. But you know where you're going. Stop getting off the road of progress to convince people of what you're doing and you didn't do what you were supposed to do for that day. Incrementally. I like to repeat words to myself when I'm doing certain things. And when I'm doing something that requires a lot of time and consistency where you don't see the results right away, I just say it to myself. Today is another day to move forward to my goal incrementally. A little bit at a time. You can't see it yet, but it's coming. Just like you look at the news and look at the weather report. Bright sunny day. But with their Doppler radar, they can see far away more than your eyes could. And they're telling you there's a Category 5 hurricane coming your way. If you don't heed the warning of a system that is so much more advanced than you, and you kick back, <laughs> they say there's a hurricane coming Category 5. Would you believe that? These people are crazy. Look, look, look. The skies are clear. It's nice and calm. But you didn't notice the ants crawling around like they're drunk. You didn't know certain bugs that don't bother you. They're buzzing around now like crazy because, see, naturally they can sense when a hurricane is coming or a really bad storm. But we lost our ability to read nature because we're up in somebody's damn business. See, there's signs all over the place screaming at us, telling us that there's a storm coming or telling us that there's something good coming. But we have to be connected in enough to not be distracted from the flotsam and jetsam and the whispering, monitoring spirits that do nothing for us we have to have our ear to the ground to tune out those other voices. Which means we need to be in a place of deep meditation and connectedness. Let me tell you something. There could be madness going on all around me. Entities trying to provoke you. Trying to get a rise out of you. Trying to cause you to rage out on them so that they can run with that snippet of reaction or if it was an action and tell people see what I told you about him or her they were screaming and raging and yelling see they're a madman don't believe it that they act so cool all the time or don't believe it that they talk this righteous stuff. Let me tell you something. I had to run one of these gossipy individuals out of my house. They go, oh no. Well, they tried to run out without me seeing them. <laughs> they tried to go out the back door and I'm in the front door, whatever. They got away. When I saw them, I said, listen, to me, this is not a reaction. This is an action. I can't tell you the words that I used, but it was something that was long time coming and I laid it down and I'm glad I did. You can run with that. You can tell people I'm crazy, but guess what? I have peace and you know, like, like Ralph Cram did on the honeymooners, right? Jackie Gleason. I know that you know that I know that you know that I know that you will never find your ass, your gossipy ass, up in my house again. That goes for all of you. Because if I do, it will be physical. Trust and believe. This is how you have to defend your peace. 
This is how you have to put up your boundaries. You don't have to try to convince anybody of who and what you are. If you want to run with that, run with that. Just leave me alone. Because when left alone in the solitude of my personal space, good things happen. I don't need those distractions. I don't need those energies around me pulling and tugging and trying to come into your household to drop seeds of, of venom, drop seeds of doubt, drop seeds of chaos that will grow later on after they drop the seed. You don't notice it when they drop the seed. When that thing starts to grow within your household, they sit back and watch. No, call it out. Never be afraid to house clean and call out what you have to call out. Believe that. You see, so many of us just look at what we see in the physical. We don't see the spiritual. We just see the physical. And there's so much that we miss. Because if you've lived life long enough, I know I'm rambling, I'm all over the place. That's just one of these things. I woke up like this. <laughs> I knew this was going to be this kind of day. But as you get older, and again, remember, age doesn't mean wisdom. You could be in your teen years and be so keen on a spiritual level because you're gifted that way. We all are different and we all move along in our spiritual ascension at different rates. But never be afraid to claim your space. Never be afraid to defend your space. Never be afraid to aggressively maintain your peace in your home and your peace of mind. Because you got to understand, if you have chaos in your mind, and especially when someone is coaxing you a certain way, provoking you, they're not good for you. And you'll never get done what you have to get done on this level. And you will become very bitter and depressed as the years go by because you were put here for a mission and you didn't fulfill it. You didn't even seek the mission out. Because they feel as though they can't go anywhere higher. So they are sent to you. Believe and trust. They are sent to you to keep you in a state of stagnation. But once you clear those energies out, those toxic energies out, those stagnant energies out, cut that grass low so you can see the snakes that lurk within it. And you'll find yourself Moving better, moving lighter, accomplishing more effortlessly. And you think to yourself, wow, look how much I'm getting done. I'm getting so much done. I couldn't do this before. I cut these entities out, cold turkey, no access. Have you ever had somebody in your life that you thought was a friend? And I have friends I haven't talked to in a long time. Don't get me wrong. We're busy. We're doing things. We're on one accord. When you get into conversations with the ones you're truly connected to as kindred spirits who respect each other's boundaries, the conversation is like you just spoke yesterday. Two years can go by. You're sending text messages, emails, but you finally get to talk and it's like, just like the old days. But there's some people that you speak to or after a while you see that they're ringing you on the phone and you say to yourself oh god I don't want to pick up not that it's all the time that way because you might be busy doing something oh I can't pick up that's different you get back to them later but they called you two or three times and you're like I, I just I just can't stomach this because I know what energy they're bringing to me. They're, 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 they're going to talk about this one thing all the time. They want to be stagnant, 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 <laughs> stagnant, getting the bonnet with it, right? They want to keep me in this place, ball and chain with them. And we're never going to make any progress. And when you talk about something of making progress, because I know a lot of brilliant people who are stuck in stagnant places. I know this one individual can be very nice, very sweet person, 
on the exterior. But when they start to see the progress in your life or what you're doing in your life as far as earning money, a job, a career, a business move, or construction of a new home, oh, they come with this pissing contest. And they call themselves friends. When I was driving the bus, because a job doesn't define me, some people fight hard for this high level, high status career because they're very insecure on the inside. I'm not saying everybody who does is insecure, but there are those who have attained this and they want to come back. Oh, 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 I forgot. You're just a bus driver. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't make money like me. You're just a bus driver. Why are you saying that? Does it make me feel bad that I drove a bus? Do you know how many connections and wonderful people that I've made and more insight and a deeper insight into human nature, which made me better over the years when I did that? I used to work in prisons and jails. That gave me a unique perspective that many people don't have when you deal with somebody who's incarcerated, which is really a condensed example of how people are in the outside world. Okay. Do some people feel that what they value is what you value? And they get very angry and upset when they realize that what they can what they consider to be valuable currency is not even something that you notice. I mean, yeah. Japanese yen, Mexican peso. American dollar, the ruble, all different types of monetary manifestations that people use, but you have to convert it for it to be good to you. You got to convert it first. How do I look? I'm in Czechoslovakia, whatever currency they use, and I'm walking around with Japanese yen. I can have a lot of it, but it won't do anything for me. I can't spend it. So these people play these games where they're in a certain lane. Say, for example, they're trying to be a doctor and they're studying to be a doctor. And the type of person they are really, they're into the status thing. This particular person, just as an example, I'm not saying all doctors are like this, but they climb the ladder and they rub their success in your face and you're sitting there genuinely feeling good for them. And then they turn around and get mad at you when they see that you're not getting jealous of them. But your thing might be gardening. And you might have a big yard with all types of exotic fruits, vegetables, flowers, plants growing that have great medicinal value. And that's your thing. And you're not even into flexing, showing off with that. How do you show off on that? That's, that's the creator made that. You're cultivating it. So that person who wants to be that doctor and talk to you condescending doesn't want to hang around you because they don't get that fix of superiority. They may want to get around other people in the medical field and and show off to them that they got so far. And oh yeah, it's a tough road. You better, I don't know if you're going to make it or not. Or I made it. And And you drop dead. You're not here anymore. A hundred years from now, nobody's even thinking about you. Shoot, 10 years, five years and not thinking about you. They might mention you in a year, those who are in your closest inner circles, but they have their own lives and life goes on. So I want to rid myself of these people. Let me just be me. Let me enjoy the peace that I have worked so hard to attain And work so hard to protect. And I will tell you now. That I am in a place of peace. I have never experienced this level of peace. And we had to do what we had to do. Had to put up a huge wall around my property. Just to keep the peace. I don't want to see you. I control this atmosphere. No one is going to be intrusive on my 
atmosphere on a physical level which supports me as I meditate on a spiritual level to enjoy mentally the peace of mind that I have attained. This is my world. I know it's not my world when I go outside. Yes, I'm a part of this world. But I've tried different techniques that were shared with me over the years and they work. My phone doesn't ring that much. I mean, I said earlier, I get a lot of voicemails. People throw information at me. They just throw it at you, throw it at you, throw it. Oh, oh why, 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 why didn't you answer? Oh, well, you, you didn't do a show on that. Why? Listen, I take what I need and leave the rest. You won't find me dead at the keyboard. There's sometimes I don't even do something for the day. I would have never been like that 10 years ago or five years ago, maybe even three years ago. My name is already established. I have nothing to prove. I'm finally living. And I see how, how can I put it? I see how it's not even worth it to try to convince people of who you are because they're going to say what they want to say anyway. So whatever it is, run with it. Okay, run with it. If your life is that empty, that running behind me gives you life, whether you broadcast it or not. You know, I have all types of uh, analytic programs and things that can show me who and what comes around, whether they hide or not, whether they subscribe to you or not. I'm like, look at this. Would you look at this? <laughs> I also have buddies who have those abilities like hackers. I say it. And they're my watchdogs. They've helped me to run away a lot of people. And as you can hear this echo, if you can hear the echo, as I'm in my living room, because I record all over this place, like I said, my biggest concern today is whether I'm going to leave out of the house or not. Eh, I'll stay at home another day and just soak up the peace and allow the toxicities that were imposed on me or that I had to be saturated and because individuals are breathing down my back so much morning, noon, and night they call you they call you in the morning oh, they, they texting you at night oh, do another show oh, oh. they call you before the show call you after the show want to hold down your energy and, and uh, then they run to other people yap, 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 yap listen no access is the best revenge no access is the best revenge and I love it I love it try it out sometime but don't waste your time trying to prove to, prove to people that you're someone else because you know you are they want to say you're bad you're bad they want to say this let them stay there and waste their precious time are you going to build your dream? And that's the thing. Uh, so much has been done while the naysayers sit there and they haven't done anything for their life. They're in the same sorry state of affairs that they were in three or four years ago. Still. And they talk about you and they're watching you. Don't they realize they're wasting time? Let me tell you something. I will reveal this much. No, I'm not. I'm not saying anything. You'll see it. You'll see it. But the other thing I want to add on to that is that those who have aligned themselves with you only for the purpose of crushing you because they cannot stand the light that you have on the inside, never go back after them for revenge. But you'll understand and you'll see, especially those narcissistic energies that are dark souls who had trauma when they were children. And many of us do go through some type of trauma. But they have allowed themselves to be tools of all things negative. But they're very convincing with their words. They're very convinced with their facade to lure you in. But they really want to kill you. 
And I'm not just saying in the physical, but they want to take your joy because they, your joy irks them because they're in torment. Your happiness that comes effortlessly, that flows effortlessly is something that pisses them off and they can't take it but for so long. Some can roll with it for years. Some will align themselves with you and do the same things you do. You'll even give them advantage from your positioning. But when they show their ass, you realize, whoa, we had a situation before years ago and you came back and I thought we were cool, but you tried to destroy me. See, and they walk around with their flying monkeys. You know what a flying monkey is? The flying monkey are the helpmates of the narcissist. So whatever the narcissist says, they jump and do. They help to fight for the cause of the narcissist. Because these folks don't have too much going on anyway. And they have been convinced by the narcissist that the narcissist is a great person. And the narcissist says that you're bad, you're bad. And they work overtime, again, to smear your character. Let them go. <laughs> you know why? Because as they speak doom into your life, and you might be crawling a little bit with your progress, but you're getting there now. You're not paying that no mind. And then you find out that karma has come to visit them. And it's only the beginning. Because from what you can see, it's a long fight. And everything is going to come tumbling down. Now, am I happy that an individual is going through things? No. But if what they are going through is their just due for what they've done to you and other people, I'm not crying. I'm not going to gloat. But I'm not crying. Just the same way if I do something wrong to you in a venomous way, because sometimes we can step on toes, right? And not know it and say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And truly be sorry, karma is not going to come visit you because you learned your lesson. But when you are calculating and you know what you're doing to use people, to use people as stepping stones, you know when you borrowed that money, you had no intention of paying it back. But we're supposed to ignore that and let you just continue to pull from us. No. You're calling karma to yourself. So don't be shocked when karma shows up at your front door. See, we know the creator. Let's say God. God. I'm not saying this in a religious way. I'm just saying it's three letters. God, we, you know, we know God is all in all, all things. I like to look at it this way. Karma is a law enforcement division of the creator. It's God. But karma is a representative of God because God sees everything. And if you, if you truly understand nature, as many of these narcissistic entities will start to talk and talk their gibberish that sounds good and usually it's something that's verbally plagiarized from some other person's platform. But see, you don't know that. You don't know what a wreck their life is, their personal life is. And they hated you because of the balance in yours and they wanted to disrupt the balance. Now they can't believe the situation that they're in because they called it on themselves. And brilliantly disguised the actions that karma caused, that caused karma to visit them. No, I'm not crying. I'm happy that the system of karma works. Because it'll work for me if I do something wrong, right? It'll work on me. I'll be calling it. It may not come right away. It might take three and a half years to come. It might take four years, five, ten years. Now you got to sit there and realize what you've done. 
and your flying monkeys once the ship starts to fall or sink or the building starts to fall they will abandon you because now they see you for who you are and they'll find somebody else to get up under and some of those flying monkeys who ran with the smear campaigns on you or, or running around with your name in their mouths in a bad way they will now come to you now they realize see they shunned you they stopped speaking to you they ran like a job oh I don't know why we don't talk anymore we used to go down really good but for some reason what you mean for some reason you became this person's flying monkey you became their disciple you forgot how you spoke so lowly of me? Don't come this way. Keep that same energy and, and go back. <laughs> so when something happens with you three o'clock in the morning and you have nobody to call, don't call me. Go back to the one who told you to speak so bad about me and continue to do so because you showed your hand in the card game of life. And no matter how they try to shift the cards and shuffle them and let you get a peek, it's engineered. Don't let them in. Zero access. No access is the best revenge. No access to your life is the best revenge. Maintain your peace of mind. It's a sweet feeling. And you'll feel yourself being replenished. You know, you know what it's like when you, when you haven't eaten for a long time, you're dizzy, you're a little lightheaded, and you eat and you feel much better almost immediately? Could you imagine? Well, on a spiritual level, when you have entities around you that are draining you, you begin to get used to that because that becomes normalcy. But once you cut them out, or they cut themselves out, thinking you're about to fall without them, or they want to convince you that, but... They cut you out or you cut them out. After a while, you're going to realize, hey, wait a second. Life is so much better this way. Because every bit of mental, physical, and spiritual, spiritual energy that I have to utilize as a gift from the creator because I've followed and submitted to the righteous laws, I can use it for myself. And when you, when you have a full tank of the spiritual power and force and energy, here they come. It might be others with their smiling faces. Don't be fooled. Vet everyone. Don't be fooled. Check the credit report, which there is none. I wish we had one for people and how they dealt with people in a situation that we don't. But our gift of discernment when you sharpen it, it always works. When you protect it, it always works. And just like an older gentleman back in the early 90s told me, I think it was late 80s, early 90s. I think it was, around 90, I think it was 1990, actually. 90 or 91. 91, I think it was. Early 91. I'll, I'll even say February of 91 because I remember I was having a little party. And it was uh, wasn't a little birthday party, <laughs> put it that way. He came to my house, and I knew him because a neighbor had an ongoing relationship with this man. This man had to be in his late seventies, and he was like a friend of the family. So he came by, and I didn't know he was at the door, but somebody had opened the door. And he was in the little hallway and there was another door that opened up and he got a peek in as to what kind of party it was. So he saw that there were a lot of females that kind of let gravity take their clothes. So he knew what I was doing in there. He chuckled. He didn't say anything about it. But he chuckled because the door swung open. Lance, you okay? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm okay. Close the door. I'll be back in there. And he looked at me. He just, <laughs> he laughed. He wasn't an old pervert trying to go in there and have some fun. He knew. He said, Lance, 
and his face dropped into a serious expression. He said, Lance, you're going to realize, and you're going to find that the older you get is the more you're going to want to be by yourself and the more you enjoy your own company by yourself away from every soul. He said, yeah, you're going to have friends. You're going to have long-term friends. You're going to meet people that you just met and you're going to get close. We understand that those are far and few between. But when you compare yourself to your younger years, you're going to realize that you feel better not allowing all of these entities into your life that are draining, that are there for their own reasons. And you know what? I don't have to be in my late 70s to realize that I'm 61 years old now. But you know what? Here I am in my own solitude. And it's better than any party that I have ever been to. It's better than any of my past conundrums with young ladies. I feel complete and whole and full. His name was Julius. And I know at this point, he's most likely not with us anymore. But wherever your essence is, Mr. Julius, you hit it right on the head. And I remember when I was a little younger, overhearing some of the war stories that you've experienced. And I don't mean war, I mean with what he saw when that door opened, right? So he was out there when he was younger. So I'm looking at him now as an older version. He's the older version of what I'm becoming. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. And I factor it all in. And I've learned a lot. That's why most of the time I have to really give myself a reason why I'm going to leave this particular property, this home of mine that I just built. Do I really want to go out there? Do I, what am I getting by going out there? I don't want to attract the wrong energy around. I don't want to deal with that. It's almost like when you're at a barbecue, a cookout in the yard, you know, you're grilling some food, some chicken, some meat, some maybe you're a vegan, it's just vegetables, some potatoes, whatever it may be. Playing a little music, you're in your yard, your friends, your family come by. It's not anything big, but say, hey, we're going to be cooking out. Just come on by. We're going to start around maybe 10 in the morning, 12 noon, whatever. There's a boxing match later on that night and you're going to watch the boxing match. Beautiful kind of gathering. I used to do a lot of those. And I know there's a particular person, a particular couple who they're listening probably and they're going to remember, right? Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas, that fight, both of those fights, we had parties for it. Um, when Tyson lost to Buster Douglas, it wasn't a party, but it was a bunch of us there. Yeah, you remember that, right? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. But me going outside... It's like being at that barbecue where the flies keep trying to land on your food. So now you're eating scared. Now you're eating, you got to hold on to your burger and keep your hand moving because the flies are just trying to land on it. Stop trying to land on my piece. I'm going to fight to keep this piece. But you can't enjoy it when you're in that atmosphere. So there's certain atmospheres that I go to now that I was kind of aware, but I wasn't aware of how draining those entities were when they were around me. I don't want to see these people. I don't want to hear these people. If I got to close all my windows and blast my music. See, by any means necessary, you must defend your peace because nobody's going to bring you peace. Well, you know, I'm married and, and my spouse is supposed to know your spouse is not supposed to bring you peace. It's not mandatory. If they do, it's fine. You're supposed to develop your own happiness. And they are supposed to develop their own happiness. And then you share in it. You share in it. Because what happens when one person waits for the other person to bring them happiness and they don't? Now you're both sitting there. One's not bringing it and you're not looking for it within yourself. It's not, not going to work out. 
Do you have the things that you do that bring you joy? You know who you are as an individual. Now you have more to bring to the table for that person who should be working on themselves and they will confide in you because you know they're not using you and they're genuine because they also got your back, ride or die. Right? That's a beautiful thing. But very few people get that right. Big shout out to Barry Biz and wife because you know I'm talking about you when I talk about the advantages of a long-term, dedicated, ride-or-die, committed relationship. I love you both. Thank you so much. And like I said, you both bring me back to a time long gone that you both know about that's so precious to me as far as our culture and the world. And just being able to say, hey, remember this. We go back. It's a beautiful feeling. But these entities, because you can have some people you go back with that you don't want to be bothered with. With them, they're my family. And of course, I live in Africa now. I haven't seen them for a long time since they visited me in Orlando. But there's not a day that goes by where I don't think about the both of you in a good way. And I'm publicly saying that. No shame in that. It's all love. The people I love, I'm going to go out for them. Ride or die. Those who are proven. And those who have ascended in a proper way. Yeah, we like the food we eat. Yeah, we like the music that we like. But past that, at the core, when you see someone who has done right in their life and by their family and by their community, you've got to honor it. And usually with the entities who are not about anything, they don't leave a legacy. Just as much as they run around with your name in their mouth, when they're gone, Nobody remembers them. Oh, they were such great people. They, they brought me great gossip. <laughs> Nobody remembers that. They move on to something else. You know? That's just the way it is. But you know, I've ranted enough. I was all over the place. <laughs> Do know that I'm taking some time to redesign the site, redesign the branding, and, and to do such things. It's... um. A lot of tedious work, but I love it. I absolutely love it. So always go to landscurve.com and we're on other social media platforms, right? And we will be broadcasting on other social media platforms. But the deal is that landscurve.com will have some shows that you won't see anywhere else. So understand that. Anyway, I just want to say. Much love to you all. Have a wonderful day. I wish nothing but progress and, and good mental health and good physical health and good spirits and a clear mind and lots of peace. Never forget that. Defend your peace. Cultivate your peace. And if anybody comes into your life that wants to take away your peace, you cut them. This is easy as that. And let them take their venom somewhere else. Let them take their venom elsewhere. Because it has no place in your life. You got work to do. You got a legacy to create. And you have a legacy to leave. To leave this world. A, a modicum better. Than it was. Before you came here. Landscurve.com. Landscurve out. Always bringing you the conversations that most people don't want to talk about, but it's here. And thank you for being here. If you lasted this long in this rant, I'm coming with another one later on. Peace. Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Lance Curve, trust me, you'll be back for more. LanceGurve.com. Bold, raw, and uncut. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell 
is right here on this earth. 